What's up, y'all? Trey be dipping in the building. You know what time it is. So, last video I showed you guys the daily, which is, uh, you know what I'm saying, that's a big part of my life. I drive it a lot. But um, a lot of you would be pretty upset if you've seen the condition my prelude's in right now. I haven't driven it uh, in about a month and maybe like five weeks, maybe, six weeks. I just been having the prelude curse just struck heavy, man. But um, it's time to get right. You know what I'm saying? I had some parts come in. You know what I mean? So I'm on my way to the shop right now, and uh, we're gonna get these new parts on so we can end this prelude curse. You heard me? All right. So we at the shop. That's the one good. Having a shop is like a double-edged sword because. It's like I never have time to use it on my personal cars because I'm always using it for like jobs but when I actually have time to actually pull my car in to do something to it it's the best um, but yeah moving forward this here is a box <laughs> in this box we have a water pump I believe this is going to solve my my overheating issue. I think that's part of the reason, not all of the reason. I'll go over that in a second. And then also in the kit that I ordered, um, or oh, I got a manual tensioner um, instead of the hydraulic one. Those tend to fail. And then of course this box has the timing belt kit in it with the belts, both belts, um, some seals, gaskets and the tensioners themselves so if you haven't figured it out by the title or by the contents of this box we about to change the timer belt and water pump fellas before we get started actually i want to say that if you guys need to do your timer belt and water pump and or water pump, it's good to do everything all at once if you're going to do the work to get to the timing belt you might as well do the water pump and vice versa um, I'm gonna put a link to the kit that I got in the description below and they're all OEM spec. Um, the only difference in my kit that I got is like I replaced the hydraulic tensioner with the manual adjustable tensioner but I'll put a link to that in the description below so save yourself some time and some money just click that link down there and uh, order the kit whether you do it yourself or take it to a mechanic it's gonna save you some money. Yeah. Not necessarily in uh, any particular order, but this is just the order that I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to start by removing the valve cover. So, Alright, so once you get the valve cover off, you're going to need to take off the belt. Um, now, in my, in, on my setup, I only have one belt. If you're stock, you're probably going to have two belts. You're going to have the auxiliary belt as well as the power steering belt. Since I have no power steering, I can pretty much skip that step. Um, so to get the belt off, you're going to have to uh, loosen up this 14 millimeter bolt right here. Um, then there's also going to be a 12 millimeter bolt below. And then you're gonna to want to loosen that up, and then on the right here's a 10 mil. This is the actual tensioner for the for the uh, for the alternator. You're gonna to want to loosen all three of those. Take this bottom bolt all the way out, push the alternator down, and the belt comes right out. Pretty simple. Uh, you're gonna to want to take the your wheel off, obviously to have access to the pulley. You don't know how to take your wheel off. <laughs> you probably shouldn't be watching this video. Alright, so once you take the wheel off, you'll have access to the pulley. Now, it's been a while since I've done it, but I'm pretty sure um, you're going to probably have to take off this driver's side motor mount so that you can lower the, the engine enough to actually have access to, to work on it. So we'll see. If I cross that road, I'll do it. But I'm pretty sure you have to. It's been a while since I've done it, but I think that's one of the little things that helps the job go a little smooth. Yeah, so it looks like it's not really 
it's not really going to I mean I got it on there but I mean I'll try it it's not really 100% flush I may be able to get it off but if you run into this issue the way you solve this is you pretty much just take the motor mount off on the driver's side so that you can lower the motor down enough to like I said have you know complete access to this so All right, so once you get the pulley bolt off, oh, another thing is, if you're watching this video, um, I didn't have a uh, timing belt cover on my car. Uh, so that is a step that I can't show you. I believe there's five to seven 10 millimeter bolts holding that on, and you can't get that off until you take off the valve cover. I think that's why I took the valve cover off first, is because you have to take the valve cover off to get the timing belt cover off. Uh, correctly I guess so yes yeah, so if you're wondering that's why I don't have I didn't have a uh, timing belt cover on mine it's just a choice that I made uh, it's not ideal for a daily driver but it is what it is moving on to the next step I'm not really gonna be able to show you this while I'm doing it because the angle is just I can't there's no way for me to set up the camera and show you at the same time but basically um, once you get the pulley off now you're gonna start disassembling the. You're gonna start releasing the tension basically. So there's a 10 millimeter bolt here. You're gonna really, you're gonna unscrew that, and then this is a 14 millimeter bolt that you're gonna to want to take off basically to um, start releasing the tension. And if you look even further up here, there's another bolt you're gonna to have to loosen. So once you loosen those three, you sh you should loosen the tension to this first smaller belt, um, and then you'll actually be able to remove this gear as well. And if you notice, there's a little notch right here. That's going to be important later down the road. So just remember that notch. So I'll come back whenever I have everything, um, all those bolts loosened and taken off. And I'll show you what it looks like. All right. So I loosened up those bolts I told you, and I took everything off. Definitely lay that out so that you can stay organized. You don't want to lose any of this stuff. Um, some of it we're going to be replacing, but still, you don't want to lose it. Um, then we come up here. Now that I took the tension off of that first belt, sorry if the camera's weird angles. Now that I took the tensioner, uh, tension off the first belt, I can actually remove it. So now, we got the smaller belt off. I don't remember the technical name for it. If you remember, if you know the technical name for it, uh, that's the balancer, balance shaft belt, I guess. I think that's what it is. So take that off. That's getting replaced. Now you have access to remove this gear. Oh. Now that I got that off, I'm going to set that to the side as well. That's definitely not something that you want to lose or damage. All right. Now we're to the point where we want to take off the actual timing belt. Now, let's see here. You can actually see right here is the hydraulic tensioner that's on there now, currently. I'll be replacing this one with the manual tensioner. Okay, so before you take off the timing belt itself, you're gonna to wanna to make sure, and I, I forgot to mention this step. Um, I remembered it right before I was about to take the belt off. But you're gonna to wanna to make sure everything is top dead center. It'll make your life a lot easier doing this job. Um, top dead center, uh, I'm not gonna to go too technical into it, but basically there's markings on all the gears. So on the cam gears, you can actually see, I don't know, this thing won't focus correctly, but basically you can see that there is a, nope, that didn't work either. Golly, man, this thing won't focus for shit. There we go. So there's arrows on the cam, both the cam gears. Um, those need to be pointing straight up. If you're doing this with the belt already on before, as long as your belt didn't snap or anything like that, if you're doing this like preemptively to, to you know, make sure that your stuff is right, um, then it should be timed already. So basically, just like I said, you wanna make sure that all the arrows are pointing up, straight up. And then, so you have those two, there's a marking on the gear down below as well, right here. So, 
you want to make sure that uh, I'm trying to get the good angle you want to make sure that this groove here lines up with the arrow that's on the block which is right there hard to see man I know my camera is doing a very crappy job of focusing when it needs to but that's basically how you um, adjust top dead center you're gonna have to put that that uh, pulley bolt back in so that you can rotate it now from what I know and what I've done in the past they say only rotate your motor counterclockwise because if you do it clockwise you'll damage the motor or you'll set the timing in properly so just keep that in mind too um, for this part obviously you're going to want to use like a breaker bar for this part to get it top dead center so I'm changing out my water pump too it's going to be hard to like I said again hard to show you up in there while I'm doing it so the best way to show you is kind of right here so um, anytime you're doing anything in a tight space where you can't really figure out um, where the bolts are especially if you haven't done it before I've done it before and I still don't remember exactly where all the bolts are so you can kind of look at the new piece and see where the holes are not all of them are holding it in but you can get an idea for where to look by looking at the new piece so in this you know I'm probably gonna be looking here 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 and here those four areas um, and then once I pull the other one out I'm gonna compare them and I really am curious to see what the difference is between this new one and then what I'm assuming is a bad water pump the one that's in there so I'll come back whenever I pull the other one out project like this it's hard to show you guys everything because it's in the car and if the motor was out the car it'd be a different story so I got the new water pump in right if this thing would clear the hell up this is the new water pump right here the one you saw it was out the car put it in I put the new tensioner in as well as the manual tensioner it's right there Next, I'm going to put the belt on and uh, make sure that it's timed properly and then take it from there. Alright, so I got the new timing belt on. Now, when you do it, there are like Honda specific, like Honda guidelines to when you do this. Um, so, when you put the, the belt on, you want to start down at the bottom gear here and you want to wrap it around here first then you wrap it up around this uh, I guess this would be the exhaust cam and then you want to keep that those two tight you, the reason you want to keep these two tight is to make sure that all that time you spent um, putting it top dead center it stays like that now from there um, I, what I like to do is bring the belt up over the tensioner over the water pump and then lastly over the intake side um, and then from there um, the manual will tell you that you're going to want to turn that bottom you got to put the uh, the bolt back on the pulley bolt and it says to turn that three teeth three teeth counterclockwise to create tension once you create the tension that's when you're going to want to put your tensioner in there whether it be the manual manual one like me like mine I can't even do that I'm like stuttering all over the place the manual like mine or I'm trying to find the box with the hydraulic there we go or the whether it be the manual one or the hydraulic one I swear this camera bro pisses me off it will never focus when you wanted to focus it's insane but anyway I got the belt on and uh, next I'm going to put the uh, the second belt on, tension that up. I mean, a lot. once you break it down the first time when you're taking everything apart, it's really all about reverse engineering. And um, it sucks because a tutorial like this is hard to do when the motor is in the car because you can't really get the angles. So if at any point you're watching this video, and you're confused on something just put it in the comments ask me a question in the comments and I'll and I'll see about helping you and like I said I'm I'm pretty much following the the Honda um, I'm following this Honda guideline book uh, which pretty much takes it step by step so it's not like I'm pulling these instructions 
out of thin air. So I am using a manual. I've used it in the past. I know what I'm doing, but you know, anytime like I couldn't remember whether the motor had to be turned clockwise or counterclockwise. And I just use that as a reference. But um, hopefully, up until this point, you're not 100% lost. But like I said, if you have any questions, um, just just ask me in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next clip. All right, so I got the uh, secondary belt on. I always forget the technical names for this stuff, man. Um, anyway, got the other belt on. Uh, those, the secondary, the balance shaft, and the, uh, I think they're both balance shafts, I guess. This one and, and the other one. Can't really see it now. Um, they both have marks on them. This one actually has a service bolt from the back to lock it in place. Um, and then you put the second belt on, and you put the second tensioner on. The second tensioner, you just literally push down with your hand and tighten. Um, and then that's pretty much it. And then um, pretty much from there on out, if you have a uh, if you have a timing uh, cover, that's when you would put the cover back on, and then you put the um, oh my god, I keep forgetting the names of this stuff. And then that's when you put the uh, the uh, pull back on. Uh, from there, honestly, I mean, it's not really worth showing, but you pretty much just reverse engineer everything. You put everything back together the way you took it off. I did have to take off my motor mount um, in order to, number one, lower the motor enough to get to the pulley bolt, and two, um, you also take it uh, off so that you can slip the belt in and out um, as well. Um, really all I did was I left this one in, I took this one and this one off and I literally just tilted this up and it gave me enough room to slip the belt on and off. Slip the old belt off and slip the new belt in. So um, pretty much in the next clip I should have everything put back together and we'll start her up and make sure everything's good to go. Start smoking shit. I'm creeping up while I'm approaching. Mm -hmm.